The views, opinions and information shared during the KCU Services podcast series belong solely to the individuals involved. Any recommendations or advice given during the podcast are general in nature and does not replace the need to seek professional advice when necessary. If you are in need of urgent assistance, please call 000 or the Kids Helpline on 1800 551 800. The City of Casey proudly acknowledges the traditional owners, Casey's Aboriginal communities and their rich culture and pays respect to their elders past, present and future. We acknowledge Aboriginal people as Australia's first people and as the traditional owners and custodians of the land on which we work and live. This podcast has been recorded on Boonarong land. Hi everyone and welcome to Season 5, Episode 4 of the Casey Youth Services Podcast. We're your hosts, my name's Tessa. And I'm Stephen. We're joined here today by Carmen, one of the youth counsellors. Welcome Carmen. Thank you so much for having me guys. Happy to have you here. Let's start off with an icebreaker. We're going to do... If you could choose your favourite vegetable, what would it be? It's a really good question and I have thought about this before and I'd have to say potato. You just (laughs) can't go wrong with potato. You can do so many things with it and it's delicious in every form. So I've got to lock that in. It's definitely the most versatile of vegetables for Mm. sure. (laughs) I actually know someone who doesn't like potato that much and it's really weird. Won't call them out, but... (laughs) I think if I had to choose one, uh, it is technically a fungus, but I probably would choose mushroom, which younger me would not be happy about that choice. But here we are. (laughs) I I hear mushroom and all I think is Mario. For me, I will go with tomato. Now, tomato can be very controversial because some people say it's a fruit, some people say it's a vegetable, but... You can have tomato in soup, you can have tomato in your burger, you can have tomato in your lasagna, in your sauces. There's so many different things you can put tomato into. So I would go tomato, but I do think tomato and potatoes go really well together too. That's true. Or you could have my preference, which is no tomato at all. (laughs) (laughs) That's fair. So, Carmen, I think it's fair to say that we all struggle with different things at times. How we process these is different for everyone. For instance, I like to snuggle with my dog, but that may not work for everyone, especially if they're allergic to dogs. Stress from school, pressure from friends and family at times, it can be really hard. I know I've experienced that before. So things like anxiety can come from a conversation you've had, you know, the way you've responded to a situation or even something you may have heard or seen. Finding ways to keep these things off your mind are important. What are some of the strategies that young people listening to can try if they are overwhelmed at times? Mm, It's a good question. I think the first thing is to really notice when you are feeling overwhelmed because sometimes we're really stressed but we're just kind of in this fight flight response that we don't even realize that we're not doing that well so it's really recognizing the signs first of all that you're not doing so great that might be you know that your sleep has changed or your appetite's changed maybe you're isolating yourself a bit more or you're feeling a bit more like agitated about things that wouldn't normally bother you so having that self-awareness is a really important first step and then you can figure out what to do with that once you kind of notice that pattern or that change within yourself So acknowledging that feeling and understanding it is like really important. Very important because if you don't realize that you're not doing so well, then you can't address it. So it's really, really important to take that time to reflect on yourself because sometimes when we are overwhelmed, we just kind of go into autopilot. We don't notice. Yeah, self-awareness and reflection, I guess, is definitely a skill that gets learnt as you get older, I feel as well. Yeah, it's huge. Absolutely. And, you know, once you do recognize, oh, I'm feeling anxious, you can think about where is this anxiety coming from and what can I do to address that, right? But it's also about the general self-care. And we all talk about self-care, but what that actually looks like is different for everyone, like you guys said, and it impacts everyone differently. But things like eating well, exercising, sleep, socializing, all those things even if they might not feel like a big impact at the time, they do add up and build your resilience. So that's a really important part. 
But then it's also around coping strategies for when you're feeling overwhelmed in the moment. So our brains can be kind of time travelers in a way. They might kind of worry about the past or worry about the future and not be so much in the present. And that's generally when we feel overwhelmed is that our brain is time traveling. It's bouncing around and it's just worrying about all these different things and we're ruminating and that really doesn't solve anything for us. So it's really important, like we discussed before about the self-awareness to notice when our brains are time traveling and when we are ruminating and kind of just in this cycle of negative thinking that is making us feel worse to really break that rumination. So what you want to do there is you want to do an exercise, like a mindfulness exercise to bring you back to the present moment. One that I really like is called the five senses. Have you guys heard of that? Yes. yes. Amazing. It's Great. used in our household. Fantastic. <laughs> it's a really good tool and anyone can do it. And the great thing is it's so subtle. You can really do it at any point. If you're about to go into a test or, you know, into a job interview, like you can use that skill. So essentially what you want to do is you want to take in your present environment to bring you back to the now and stop your brain from bouncing around. And you take in five things you can see and just really look around and, you know, just take in, oh, I didn't notice that poster before. You know, there's, there's no wrong answer. Four things you can hear three things you can feel, two things that you can smell, and one thing that you can taste. And then really observe how you felt before that exercise and after, and notice that like your body might be feeling calmer now, and maybe your heart rate has slowed down and your mind's gone quieter, because the body and mind are so connected that when we do a grounding exercise that calms our body, that'll calm our mind as well, and vice versa. So that's a really valuable example of kind of how we can ground ourselves in the present to kind of help with that feeling of being overwhelmed. It's it's a great way to distract yourself. It's like I need my brain to be distracted so I can stop thinking about all the things that are worrying me and all the stress and just start to focus on what's important and right now is the important thing. I love how you said about the time traveling because Mm -hmm. there was a time not that long ago for me where I would really get anxious and worry about things that were coming so say I was going to an event in my brain I'd already planned out that event I'd gone through that event and potentially had conversations with people that might be awkward before I even got to the event so when I get to the event I'm already experienced it and I feel like I'm going there in a bad space I'm not going to enjoy the space so now I just let all those sort of thoughts go and you know if I start to feel that way for me my strategies are music Mm. but also talk to people Make sure others know what you're at, you know. So if you are having a conversation with somebody, they can pick up on if you're not in a good space, if things are said, they can respond in a different way. So if someone's aware of, you know, how you're feeling, you know, their response to you might be a little bit different to what it would be if they didn't know that. Mm, That's great. And that's, again, that self-awareness, right? And really when you have that self-awareness, you can communicate where you're at and you're like, you know, maybe I am a bit more in that fight-flight at the moment, And you can kind of set boundaries around that as well, right? And that's a really important thing around self-care and around well-being too, is being able to set those boundaries around. I don't have capacity to, you know, do this or do that. And that's really important as well. Like if you're really stressed about exams and then your friend needs to talk to you about something challenging, maybe you just don't have the mental capacity at that time and that's okay. Yeah, it doesn't make you a bad friend. It means that you're telling them, maybe not now, but I can give you myself better later when I'm more prepared for this and I wish it was something that I learned when I was younger that it's okay to have healthy boundaries and it's something even as you get older that's really hard to keep in place because obviously as people I feel like we do really want to help everyone around us if we can but you know how can we what's the saying called pour from an empty cup Exactly. Um, Yeah. That's exactly it. That's a really good metaphor. We can't pour from an empty cup. So we need to look after ourselves in order to support others. Yeah. So it's not, you know, selfish or wrong to look after yourself and put your needs first. Yeah, definitely. That was really good. Mm. That was fantastic. I love that pour from an empty cup. Yeah, well Um, done. So, of course, talking to family and friends is a great way to start if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you have those relationships in place. But if that is difficult for a young person, who could they turn to for support outside of the home environment? Or who would you recommend? Yes. 
That's a really good question because, you know, it's a really good thing to have that support from our friends and family, but it can also be really beneficial to talk to someone who is outside of the scenario, who can be really objective in that space. And you know that it's a private conversation where it's not going to impact you in your outside life. So talking to a counselor can be really valuable in that space. So that's, you know, what the youth counseling team does. We provide that private space for young people to talk through whatever's going on in their mind and try to give them that safe space to make sense of it, maybe develop some strategies and to kind of work towards whatever their goals are. So absolutely recommend talking to a counselor. Um, you could be talking to uh, a teacher or a school well-being and, you know, just kind of sharing how you're feeling is that first step. And then, you know, that trusted adult can kind of help you take the next steps to make sure that you get what you need. Definitely. Yeah. And it's, it's one of those things where adults have different experiences. So the things that you're experiencing, someone might have experience something similar and they could help you with you know uh, what process and pathway you should go in getting support so i guess that leads to the next question we have here you know we have great connection with Mm. the counseling team and we sort of get to work with you guys really well Mm. and i think what i'd like to know for the young people out there is what they would experience in terms of coming into the space, what it's like, how would they how would they be welcomed and those sort of things. Yeah, absolutely. And it is such a wonderful thing that we have this partnership with the youth information centers because it is such a youth friendly space. So we do provide our counseling out of the youth information centers in Cranburn, Hampton Park and Nary Warren. There are counseling rooms within those centers and it's a really warm, welcoming, bright environment, really non clinical you know, there's some comfy couches, there's fidget toys and art supplies for everyone to use however they like. And really, you know, when you start off in counseling, it's just really getting to know each other, building that rapport, building that comfort, and figuring out what you want to work on in counseling and how we can best support you with that. So really, we're guided by you on what what you want. And we trust that you're the expert in your life. And we're kind of there to walk alongside you in that. So the counseling service, it is really flexible. And I think sometimes young people can be a bit hesitant or any people can be hesitant to engage in counseling because it's really scary. feels like a huge commitment. But the thing is, like, you're in charge of it. If you have one session and you're not really feeling like that's what you're wanting or that's what you're ready for, it's voluntary. You can, you know, stop engaging and that's okay. We really respect that you're on your journey and, you know, you can kind of make that choice. Um, Even if you're not quite clicking with your counselor, like, you know, you can always ask like can I try a different counselor like it's really it is really up to you and we really want to support whatever is in your best interest I think a barrier for young people to reach out sometimes and something that I think I would have been concerned about as well before I was educated on counseling services and everything might be that if they share something they're not sure if it's going to stay between obviously themselves and the counselor and they don't really know what the protocol is with confidentiality. Could you maybe demystify that a little bit for the young people listening? Absolutely. And that's a really important thing that the young person feels that it's a safe space for them to share whatever they need to share. It is a confidential space, but of course there are limitations around that. And that's because of our duty of care and to support the young person's safety. So you know, what we discuss is confidential and we would never just go and share that information with like a parent or anything like that without consent. The exceptions to that are around if we feel that there might be risk to yourself or risk to others that we might need to share that information. But we will, as best we can, involve you in that process and and empower you in that process. So it is really only when we need to that we will you know, break that confidentiality, but we really try to create that safe space as best we can. Yeah, it's important to know that if these conversations do have to go further, it is for safety reasons for the young person involved or potentially someone else. So, look, they're already feeling vulnerable. It can be hard to talk. So, you know, knowing the things that they say will be kept between them and the counsellor, there's really reassuring. Yeah, and I think from memory... That would be something that is discussed with the young person upon reaching out and connecting with the service as well. Wouldn't just come out of nowhere. (laughs) Absolutely. Really important point. We do review, you know, consent and confidentiality and privacy when we start support. And you're welcome to ask any questions as you go along as well. We want to make sure that's as understandable as possible. 
Yeah, for sure. So with the process for contacting the counselling team, I do believe I know some aspects about it, but not all. My favourite being that the young person can text because, yeah, I tell everyone that because I personally don't always like making phone calls, but what does the process look like when they want to reach out and contact you? Mm, Yeah, look, phone calls can be scary. So it is really good to have that text line as a starting point. Sometimes you just don't know what to say, but just, you know, you don't need to know exactly what you want to say. Like we will guide you through that and we'll ask you questions. But essentially what it looks like is we have an intake line and if you text us, we will call you or arrange a time to call you to talk through that process. So there'll still be a phone call, but it just means that, you know, you kind of start with a text and then we can kind of organize that. A bit less daunting when you are expecting the call. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, we want to just take down those barriers as best we can. And then, you know, with the phone call as well, basically in the phone call, you'll speak to one of our counselors and then we will kind of talk through what you're looking for, how we can best support you, what's been going on for you. You know, we'll also kind of talk through making sure that we're the best support for you because that's really important to us that you get the best service for you. And, you know, we do have that no wrong door policy. So either way, we'll make sure that you're walking away with good information. So even if it's determined that we might not be the perfect service for you, we'll make sure that we provide some recommendations on other pathways that will be helpful for you because we want to make sure that you can access that support and make it as easy as possible. So I really like with the no wrong door because it means that it's a step towards getting support, whether it's with the counselling team or whether it's with someone else, it's the right way to go forward. You are taking a step. So it's a really great way to, to put that. Absolutely. And we will always, you know, provide that listening ear to hear your story and understand what your needs are. And even if you're not certain that we're going to be the right support for you, you can just give us a call and we can talk through it and make sense of it together. Yeah. Yeah, and the counselling team is also pretty fun, it should be noted. I have played Uno with a lot of them, with young people, some foosball, and, you know, it's pretty fun to beat them. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely played some table tennis as well. Mm. Yeah, no, a very good space. We've even had them in our monthly challenges, so, you know, it's great to sort of see them up and about and they're in the centres so they're a friendly face and someone you can talk to so that's really good definitely okay well awesome well (laughs) we just want to say thank you Carmen for your time today thank you it's really appreciated and it's great for the young people out there to know just what counselling can do for them and the process in how to get to it it's really important to know that it is a safe space it's confidential And, you know, they are friendly and they are there to help you. So, yeah, reach out to them if you do need that. Yeah, and letting them know that what they are going through, they aren't alone. There is someone there for them. And there are some helpful tips that you gave as well for them to start with. Absolutely. And there's so many wonderful strategies out there that, you know, even if one doesn't work for you, doesn't mean that there aren't others that will. So it's definitely a space that the Youth Counseling Support Service team can help you explore and to really empower you to have those strategies to support your well-being. Yeah, definitely. And if a young person does feel like they need to reach out and get some help, and if they don't feel like our counseling team is right for them, that's totally fine. As Carmen mentioned, there are a lot of services out there. And we will put some relevant ones in the show notes just for you guys to check out if you ever feel like you need to. And if you are in a youth centre, you can always ask one of the youth workers to help you out with that as well. We always want what's best for you and for you to succeed and feel supported in your life. So until next time, guys, take care and stay safe. Feel free to drop into the KC Youth Information Centres. We are open 1.30 to 5.15pm, Monday to Friday, with extended hours exclusive to Hampton Park. Please check out our website for more details. As always, all appropriate links will be attached to the show notes. To stay up to date with all the exciting things happening in KC Youth Services, please feel free to follow, like and share us on our social media accounts at KC Youth Services.